Hello everybody, I start a little bit early and welcome you all here on Jack the Gate Live Talk and today it will be my great pleasure to speak with the wonderful French cellist Camille Thomas who will join us now. I see Camille is already here. Inside this interview immediately. Let's hope the connection is working again. Yes! Hello! <laughs> Hello, Camille. Hey, I'm very good. And you? How are you, Sasha? <laughs> Thank you. I'm good too. I'm happy to see you. And you have a beautiful view and a beautiful weather. Can yes. I please see my beloved Paris for a moment? Can you yes, show of me? Of course, of course. Oh, Mama, dear. look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. So that's uh, my roof, uh, can, uh, yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. In which area? In which area are you living, Camille? Uh, I'm living in Montmartre. Normally, <sighs> but now I am um, in a, in a, in another apartment that is a little bit bigger because my apartment is very small. So now it's okay. uh, yeah in Mouffetard, you know, Quartier ah, Mouffetard. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So you can beautiful. see the. Actually, I'm hiding it, but the beautiful thing to see is the Pantheon, yes. Pantheon right here. Oh, yes, I see Pantheon. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm sorry, I, I am in front of it, but that's how it is. <laughs> beautiful. Camille, so thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we would like to ask you, first, I would like to ask you, you have a very specific education because you were studying a lot in France, but then you went to Germany and you were also studying a lot in Germany. So for me, being Viennese, I would love to ask you, what for you was the biggest difference in the approach of education between France, Paris and Germany, Berlin? Uh... I mean, of course, it's uh, it's personal uh, because I am French. So I, I was born in Paris, and I studied there as a young uh, young uh, young student, <laughs> young student. Um, and when I was 17, 18, I wanted uh, some fresh air. I I wanted also to learn something that was not um, my country, my uh, the thing that I could do, you know, easily. Because I'm already French, so I, and I was already always fascinated with Russian sound, Russian writers, uh, all what comes from the East. So yes. I thought, yeah, well, and I tried Berlin. I remember it was uh, it was ten years ago. Now we are very old, huh? and uh, <laughs> I took the <laughs> I took the night train, and I did this exam, and it it, it worked. So I started in Berlin and then I stayed in Germany because uh, yeah for me what, what I loved in Germany that I felt very free you know in France there is something quite difficult it's uh, there is only two big conservatory in Paris and in Lyon so it's very very competitive especially if you are French and what I loved in Berlin was that I felt that everybody could go his own way and that the goal was to become an artist. And, you know, it was always for me then very important to become an artist, not to win competitions or to be the best at uh, scales, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's very important, but the most important is what you have to say and uh, what, what you believe in. And for me, the way to achieve my education uh, the best was to do that in Germany. It's, it's very fascinating because uh, I had the same experience on a different level when I left Vienna and I studied in New York and it was very different, of course, because also culturally, but uh, I can very well connect and understand you. So it's, yeah. it's very interesting that maybe we can say for all of us artists to leave our home environment for one moment in our educational period can be really eye opening, ear opening in many ways. Oh, the wind blow with just the road. It's <laughs> a live, in, live interview. Huh? You have exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Very interesting. So, um, Camille, you just said one thing, which is really I found uh, very inspiring. Uh, you mentioned this in also other interviews. You say for you, music 
needs to tell a story. And it's about the colors to explore. So what kind of story you would like to tell in your music? What is what you are searching that the other people feel when they listen to your music? Yeah, it depends. I mean, all the stories <laughs> in the in the human uh, soul, you know, I just think that a note is not just uh, <laughs> it's, it's not just something on the paper. It's uh, it's like a word. It, it has a meaning. So it can be uh, about about love. I think a lot of things are about love, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it, it can be about uh, yeah, about death, about life, about sadness. But it not just something. Uh, it, for me, it's not a concept. You know, the music. It's something in your flesh, in your soul, in your heart. That's why I say that I always tell a story. It's uh, it's it's always different, and also the same same score. Like when I'm playing um, uh, Elgar Concerto, it's not the same story every night, even if it's the same note. It's that's the magic actually also of the music. You can uh, it's a mix uh, between uh, your emotions, what the composer wanted to say, also with whom you are playing because you are inspired by the conductor, by the musician of the orchestra, by the audience, by where you are. And I think that's also a very difficult thing right now for us musicians is that that biggest part of our inspiration is uh is missing <laughs> so we Absolutely. have to to reinvent uh to invent new things and actually it's also very interesting to find uh, inspiration within ourselves you know when you just you cannot for example for me i see this view it's amazing the only thing i have for now i cannot go in the nature i cannot cannot meet uh, meet you in person and uh, i cannot do chamber music but so, but from this, actually, I got very inspired too. So it's very interesting. Very so interesting. would you say, would you say, coming from this point of view, which I totally agree to, that now we have the time, which is the biggest present of every culture disease, but we have the time as a present to reflect better on us so that the audience, when we come back, actually can find a new ourself in the interpretations you will do on stage? Yes. I, I really believe this, and I, I also believe that the audience will be different because we are missing them, but they're hopefully <laughs> missing us too a little bit. I mean, they're missing live music and uh, this, this gift, you know, from her to her. So I believe, of course, it, it's a little bit naive to say that this all crisis is positive because it's... Uh, yeah. no. yes. but, no. but we have to, to take uh, the positive out of it. And uh, I, I, I can feel that first I'm making a lot of progress these days because I'm practicing. Like I could not practice things. Uh, I don't know, since I, I'm a student, you know, when I could just go to the school and have the full day to learn something without the concert, without um, the pressure of being ready the, day, the next day, you know. So it's completely different. It's deeper, you have more time. And, and then, yeah, of course, I'm experiencing other things so i think all this uh, and also the it's like now when when you don't have something you you really feel what you miss so i think the joy to be on stage will be like so huge that i think the public will feel it and uh, and we, uh, yeah they will also give us the joy because yeah being in a concert hall together will be amazing <laughs> yes i think so i agree i think it's a really beautiful way to reset to reflect and then yeah. actually come back to the audience and also the audience to us in a new way, whatever it will be. We don't know now, but it's yeah. definitely interesting. Yeah. Yes. So another thing which is beautiful about you, I found very beautiful is that your um, choices when you do your CDs, your repertoire, your CD came out and uh, it's called Voices of Hope. And one of the pieces um, is the new concerto by Fazil Sai for cello and orchestra, where Fazil, as I know him, always has a very deep meaning in his music. He reflects to the colors, we talk about colors again, in the orchestra, representing the souls of people, again, talking about souls. So can you tell us a little bit more about the piece and also how you were collaborating with Fazil and developing this wonderful project? 
Yeah, first, the name of the piece is Never Give Up. And we, it's a project that started actually now six years ago. I met uh, Fazil in 2014 at, uh, in, in France at the Victoire de la Musique. And then we met in Paris and he wanted to write a cello concerto and uh, I was a cellist <laughs> and uh, the one thing uh, concerto for me and and this is the, one of the most maybe the most incredible adventure in my life until now because I could experience the birth of a musical piece I could work with one of my uh, musical idol wow <laughs> no problem, no problem. It's live. It is all from from your home to my home. So no problem. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I I I, I love Fazil as a pianist uh, already yeah. since a lot of years because what what I said at the beginning, every, uh, what I what I am looking for in the music is that it speaks to your heart and that you are not bored. That when someone they play you want to listen and with Fazil it's exactly the case every time I think he's really fascinated he, he fascinating he becomes the music he's not anymore Fazil Tsai or pianist or you're not anymore at uh, in Paris it's just the music at this moment and you forget about everything and so I, I could work with him closely and uh, so we we seem never give up. It's uh, representing a little bit my character, <laughs> a lot, because that's how uh, I am. <laughs> and I think that's how all um, be, uh, all musicians and um, artists, uh, everybody, we, we should be. I mean, it's, uh, life is not easy, but you can achieve big things when you try and try and try again. And especially when we do this kind of things like going on stage playing extremely difficult things in a difficult situations and blah 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 and sometimes it goes wrong and then you have to have the courage to to go again to try again and the next time will it be better better next time will be better that's that's the i think the art it's so to fail and... all the time and never give up <laughs> <laughs> nah, maybe not all the time but to accept that you can fail <laughs> you're human and and Fazil represents this also I mean with his uh, political engagement um, I mean how is he he is as a human and how is he is as a musician so we started this project together and then um, came this terrorist attack in uh, in Paris in Bataclan then in Istanbul and actually he started to write a concerto right after this as a response and the idea then of never give up really came clear in his mind the idea that we should never give up on on hope and on humanity even uh if there is thing like yeah people with no soul that are killing killing other people in a in a nightclub or at a concert it's and this he put it in the music in a way for me it's so sincere it's and that's why it's so emotional also he just put it all his pain and also this uh you can hear people suffering you can hear the cello he's like a human voice in the old concerto and you can also hear the kalashnikov the instrument of death and then and then at the end you go to the na na nature and you hear birds and you hear water sound and it's really a journey into our experience our time so yeah that was the experience with him he sent me the score via whatsapp <laughs> i could discover everything from his hand i mean it was really magical and then i went to istanbul i discovered istanbul actually i met you i yes. think first time i came to istanbul because you were playing with nemania it was an amazing yes. concert i Yes. Still remember. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we played the premiere in Paris in 2016, and then I, um, I really felt my I have to record this because uh, never give up. Uh, this piece we need to hear it now, and and now the CD is coming out in the middle of this um, other crisis, 
and and the power of the music uh, of of the hope this idea that beauty will save the world it's it's still so actual so yeah i was thinking about it in another time but i'm happy to to have this message today too yes no i think it's a beautiful message and uh I know Fazil, of course, from my time in Istanbul, and uh, I think it's beautiful to give this human voice, like we talked from the beginning, uh, in the spirit of the soul to the people. So I think it's a beautiful idea. It's also a wonderful um, theme for a CD, Voices of Hope. And we believe in music, we are musicians. So it's, I think, yes. something we can give to everybody, to our community and also feel that music and culture in general is beautiful. But I want to come back to something you said before, which is about the music making itself. So um, you said um, in your words, how we are on stage, that we actually start to really become the music, that we are not actually anymore individual human beings with an ego connected, right? So we are really trying to get away from the ego and make the music speak in a way that we get the maximum uh, connection from the music to the audience and all people involved. So my question um, is, how do you experience on stage your balance? Because I feel and kind of out of physical uh, experience when I conduct the score usually. So it's, it's like when I stop conducting and it's over, then I feel my body normal again in a certain way. I know I've been a violinist, so it's a, it, the, also the cello is very fine motorical thing. It's not a, a, a real easy way to let free the fingers and everything, although you train it. So my question is really, how do you experience your body during your performances? Are you in trance? Like I can say I'm definitely in kind of a trance status, or are you more observing everything in, in from a distance? Um, I would say answer one. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I. It's a difficult balance because it's something that uh, I have naturally. That um, I love the stage, and when I am stage, I forget about everything. I'm. I. It's like it's a little bit magical when I have the public. Suddenly, I I forget about me because I. I feel that I'm just here to give some music, and I'm just um, a pass uh, away. <laughs> and yes. um, and and I play so much better. But then I, I had to work on um, very warm and my head cold <laughs> because yes. because you just uh, yeah sometimes you have to to have cold head. So that that was, but yeah, a few years ago, from my first experience on stage, I I, I learned this that uh, you cannot be completely. Actually, yes, you can, but then, <laughs> yes, then I, I I worked on it, and I actually it's all the practice. You practice that it's automatic that your head is always controlling, but this is will this become a. a something that you don't think about anymore on stage yeah. and when you are really good prepared it means that you can go on stage and actually forget about everything because your head is doing it alone and then it's only you heard speaking yes the exactly yeah something Beautiful. like that yeah <laughs> absolutely okay the last um, the last thing i wanted to ask you is i see um since the very first beginning um I spent with Beatrice, I think you did the first big CD, but it's like you have an aesthetic for visuals too. Like as if it's important for you that you create a complete work of art when you do a CD, because it's something beautiful. Also in Istanbul, we tried the same thing, right? We, we tried to give the audience from the beginning of enjoying the music, a feeling of atmosphere, right? So, so you're doing the same thing. So what is it? with you and the visual arts? Do you have also a fashion thing? Do you have which colors speak to you? So I wanted to, to ask you a little bit about this, how your visual artistic mind or, or heart is working. I mean, it, it's very simple. I, I love beauty in general with a big B. And, uh, and for me, when I'm presenting, it's not only CD, 
it's everything. I I like that it's uh, it's beautiful that it's connected to the music. For example, something very simple when I I choose a dress for a concert, I try that the dress match to the piece um, somehow. I cannot do that. That's unfair. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have this little advantage, but uh, yeah. Uh, but and and creating the image for for a CD, it's it's fascinating. It's not my job. I can um, I, I feel that uh, I I need help and I love to have good team because it's it's uh, it's it's yeah it's something completely different uh, to play music to to put it into images, and I think it's it's very difficult uh, to to do it right that it's not cheesy or that it's. Uh, yeah, it's right balance, but yeah, I just I just feel good when everything uh, is uh, connected in a right way. So somehow maybe I do it also for me. I don't know, but I like that the music, the image, the the words, also the text. You know, you put on on program or on the CD. Actually, I think that all arts are connected, and uh, that you can create real beauty when uh, when everything goes well together so well, i try always to have bridges between it's not only the the music is a center for me because as a musician but have to have yeah bridges with other people well i think that's <laughs> a artists. beautiful last word that art is all about the beauty and real beauty yes and that this is what the artists care and this is in the end also what I think the human soul cares and why the people are listening and experiencing art. So I think it's a beautiful last word, if you agree. I will keep it like that, yes? <laughs> yes. Okay, that's beautiful. Camille, I say so much thank you for keeping us here uh, well, a little bit you. of your time in Bravo Paris. For, and... for, for this initiative to bringing us together this time. Yes, I hope well... we can do it. We can still do it even when we will be moving around and playing again. <laughs> I think so. I, you know, I think we should all get connected and we should all share our passions. Yes. And uh, in this little platform, what we have now, we can really talk a little bit and enjoy our passions and, and exactly. also the shared with the audience. And uh, I'm so happy really that you were here and I'm sure we see each other again. Yes. And uh, yes, <laughs> and we, we talk about something and I want to say now also to our audience, thank you so much for joining us with Camille. You saw a little bit of Paris. I'm sorry, I don't yes. have the same view here. <laughs> I should change apartment too. <laughs> but but uh, the next show is just in 10 minutes with Julian Rachlin. Um, and his wife Sarah, and we look forward. They have a better view in Vienna, actually. Maybe we see something there. And Camille, I send you a big virtual hug, and hopefully we see each other also very soon on stage. But in any case, here um, on yep. Check the Gate. Thank you so much, and Ciao. bye bye. Bonjour. Bye. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir now. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao.